okay so when you're coming to Canada to study there are two instances under which you may need an English exam and we are going to talk about the types of English exams the instances when you need them and what you actually need to be aware before you go ahead and take an English exam you know I see people you know come to me they are like Rice, uh, apply for me a study permit or I want you to get me a school admission excuse me and some of them have already gone ahead and taken an English exam and I'm like mm, you know what it wasn't really needed okay so let us see if we can help you today <laughs> I always also try to save you money hi guys how are you this is Lois welcome back to my channel I hope you're well and safe it's almost summer and our daylight now is longer you know it's 7 p.m. and there's sunshine outside uh, I hope this summer I'll take you outside okay sure guys so <clears throat> excuse me today I want us to talk about I actually want to answer a question do you need an English exam to come to Canada as an international student that is a question that crosses everybody's mind and this is a question that is also sent to me more times than I can count because there's uh, a lot of information out there there's also confusion out there and I want to clarify just so that you know exactly what you need to do okay <clears throat> guys uh, my name is Lois so <laughs> I am a regulated Canadian immigration consultant and I'm based in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I don't have offices anywhere else in the world. Uh, have you subscribed? If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And if you've subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you. This channel is for your education purposes only. I bring you free information here, even on legal matters. Uh, but please don't take this as legal advice. If you need legal advice, please book a consultation on my website www.milelaimmigrationservices.ca those details are going to be in the description part of this video okay i know <laughs> i go to the comment section and half of the comments are what's your email address guys it's in the description part of the video okay so when you're coming to canada to study there are two instances under which you may need an english exam and we are going to talk about the types of English exams, the instances when you need them, and what you actually need to be aware before you go ahead and take an English exam. You know, I see people, you know, come to me, they're like, Rice, uh, apply for me a study permit, or I want you to get me a school admission. Excuse me. And some of them have already gone ahead and taken an English exam, and I'm like, mm, you know what, it wasn't really needed. Okay, so... Let us see if we can help you today. <laughs> I always also try to save you money. Okay, guys? Yes, so here we are trying to see whether we can save money, whether you actually need that test or not. Uh, so two instances when uh, you may need an English exam uh, to come to Canada. You may need it for school admission or you may need it for study permit application. You may need it for both. Okay? Let's look at school application. That is for school admission. For school admission, you need to know whether you need to take a test or not, as not all schools require an English exam. Okay? Not all schools. It's not, uh, it's not one rule across the board. And, you know, I see information out there that says for you to come to Canada to study, you must have this uh, exam and this. No, 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 please. It's not everybody who needs an English exam. That's why I always tell people understand Canadian immigration and you're going to sell to save yourself a lot of misery and money okay so <clears throat> excuse me majority of the schools do require an English test though majority of the schools not all schools uh, then now this is a differentiator depending on the course level and your country of origin or country of study uh, the testing may be waived that's a good thing okay so <laughs> that means um let me give you a scenario 
uh, some some countries may say that uh, actually some schools here in Canada usually do give like when you go on their website they will say people from these countries are exempted and I know Kenya is one of them so majority of Kenyan students actually don't need uh, school admission uh, I mean uh, language testing for school admission for some courses not all of them okay so uh, people stop stop spending money until you know whether your country is exempted because a lot of countries are exempted and each school is going to have a list on the countries which are exempted from an english exam okay then uh you also need to understand that most undergraduate courses so people who are just leaving high school and they're coming here to do their first diploma or you know or the first degree those ones mostly will need an English exam for admission because they don't have any post-secondary education. So those ones, most of the time, they will need an English exam. Most of the time, like 90% of the time, they'll need an English exam for school admission. However, most postgraduate courses, people who are coming for masters, for postgraduate diplomas, postgraduate uh, certificates, uh, as long as they have taken a program that was three years uh, previously or some schools even consider two years undergraduate programs, uh, they're going to be exempted from providing an English exam. Okay? Yes. And some schools uh, may require you to provide uh, just the transcripts and the certificate for the post-secondary education that you currently possess. Or some of them may say send us uh, a mode of instruction letter. That is a letter that you get from your previous uh, institution of learning, so like your previous university in your country, that says that uh, you, you are instructed in English. So those waivers are only for people who were previously instructed in, in English in post-secondary education. Again, understand, before you go spending money, know what are the requirements of that school. Okay? So that depends on schools. It's not necessarily a one rule uh, for all schools. But then if you can get waived an English exam, whether, you know, some of them cost up to 300 Canadian dollars. So anyway, so which are the acceptable English exams for school admission? Uh, mostly one of the main ones is IELTS. That is I-E-L-T-S. And they need the academic option you need to make sure that you achieve at least a six in each ability. So if you get a seven in one ability, like listening and speaking, and then you get a five in writing, you have failed. So make sure that uh, you get at least a six across the board, not, o not overall, okay? There are so many times people tell me, I got an overall band six, but then they also got a band four in one of the abilities. So make sure that it's six, 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 six. Uh, actually, some courses, depending on uh, school, some courses may require you to actually get a 7. I know some engineering courses or some nursing courses may require you to get a 7. So also make, make sure you understand what is the requirement uh, pass grade, okay? Uh, excuse me. The other one that is accepted is Duolingo. Duolingo is an online exam that you can take from the comfort of your home and i think it's easy a lot of people prefer it uh so you can take duolingo as long as you get an average of about uh, 115 and then you can also show toefl and you need a pass mark of about 86 87 depends with schools also but that's average for most schools uh, and other schools also accept another test called pte okay for pte most of them require 58 so let's now look at the other instance that is for people who are coming here on study permits. So if you're coming, no, yeah. So after you get admission, the next step is getting a, a study permit. So <clears throat> an English exam may be required for your study permit application. Not always. It's not mandatory. I know. <laughs> it's not mandatory. So it's only required if the requirements of your specific country for the study permit applications state that you must have an IELTS uh, or an English exam. Okay? 
there are some countries for example there are countries that run the uh, the study direct programs those ones require you to provide an english exam okay or even the nigerian direct program that one requires that you provide an english exam for your study permit application uh, for study permit application only ielts academic is accepted please don't bring me general ielts general uh it's the ielts academic test that is uh, accepted and you need to have uh, at least a six and above okay and that's why it's important that you meet the requirements of your admission if that was a requirement for admission but again i said there are people who are struggling to get this kind of a test uh, result so if it's not needed for your country i know for for example in nigeria if you're applying through the regular class you don't need an english exam however if you're applying through the direct program you need an english exam if you're struggling with um english testing then you don't have to apply through the study direct uh, the, the, the direct program then just make sure that you apply in good time uh, because that one has a longer processing period than the direct program okay guys all right so be smart i'll tell you this be very smart when you're doing the english testing initially whether that is that is uh, at the school admission stage okay be smart because you may do let's do duolingo or toefl some people have gone ahead and done toefl for school admission yet your your country conditions or requirements require you to provide an english exam and toefl will not be accepted for study permit so you find that at the end of the day you'll have taken toefl of course you paid for it and now for study permit you'll still take an ielts academic spending money i told you i'm in the business of saving you money okay guys <laughs> you should pay me <laughs> so anyway uh <clears throat> make sure you don't uh, you're not paying unnecessarily the only time that i would advise you to pay twice there are people and i know the ielts test for some reason is uh you know a lot of people have trouble with it and people have complained that uh, it's not friendly it's also hard to achieve that uh six 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 or a seven score so if you're applying for school and you're not meeting the IELTS requirements, okay, that's a time that I can say apply, you know, take Duolingo or take TOEFL or PT, whatever is available in your locality, take it for the purpose of school admission. And then don't go to sleep, people. Don't sleep now. <laughs> while they're giving you admission, while they're adjudicating your application, practice, practice, practice as if your life depends on it for the IELTS exam because then you'll need it for the study permit application that is if your country requires so in that case i can say be ready to spend money but you're trying to save yourself time you know and trying to receipt and missing out deadlines trying to receipt uh the IELTS academic exam okay yes <laughs> now 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 this is uh one thing i want to tell you i have seen um a lot of complaints now we've come out of uh, those two requirements this is just my personal advice and not out there uh people who do duolingo you know duolingo is simple uh you can do it i uh, simple so simple is relative guys uh so it's rela uh, it's simple you're doing it at the comfort of your home it's online uh but i have seen a lot of complaints uh from people who tell me that they their results were cancelled okay Please, Duolingo has a lot of requirements and, and uh, uh, rules. And they do that because, you know, there's nobody who is uh, adjudicating you. So it's an AI guided uh, kind of an exam. So they have to make sure for security reasons, you're not checking somewhere. Someone is not with you in the room. Someone is not helping you. So you must make sure that you adhere to the rules set in there. Like you cannot be looking away. You can't have headphones. You can't have hair over your, you know, so make sure that you understand the rules before you even take that first Duolingo exam to avoid your test being, um, you know, rejected or canceled. The good thing is if they cancel, you can receipt again and again. But if you keep making the same, same mistakes, it's going to be rejected ever over and over and over again. So, uh, help yourself, hold your hair up, make sure you don't have uh, any distractions you don't have writing material in front of you and uh the, i have also seen a lot of people who ace duolingo 
with a fast attempt and it's a cheap exam compared to you know things like IELTS so if you don't need it uh, for study permit you only need it for school admission by all means if the school uh, accepts because not all schools also accept uh, Duolingo okay not all schools and I think I did a video about Duolingo I'm going to attach that video in the description part of this video so that you understand okay so my friends did I give you clarity understand whether you need an English exam not everybody needs to do it uh, understand whether you need it for school or for study permit application or for both okay thank you for watching please share like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video